me hear your sweet words. Okay. Dude, is it true all you Visayan girls talk so sweet and soft? Not all Visayan. You can, you can even make mean bad words sound so sweet. Oh, yes. Only from, only Ilonga is sweet. Yeah. So, Some Visayan, you know. So what's the Some difference in how you speak then? What's something that's sweet in your dialect? Just speak just in your normal dialect of what they always say the way you say words so sweet like. Hey, if you want to eat. So, your actual language and dialect that you speak where you grew up right here in Tikbawan is, is called what? Karaya. Karaya? Yeah, but we're kind of like loud on it. Loud, you know. No, I agree with that. Yes, but there's always <laughs> R, you know, and it don't go is L. Yeah. Like, uh, wala, wara, you know. Wala, wala mo. Yeah, and that's what y'all do. Y'all do that little mo and all that where y'all so yeah, sweet with it. Good. Yeah, everything will... Right, right. And then the alternative, like, say, Basayan, they do what? Uh, I, I don't know, some of the Cebuano, you know, words. Oh, there's just so many dialects in there. But you're, you're actually right on the edge here where we live at. Of, in between of... Uh, Antiki and uh, Ilongo, you know, Karaya. And uh, Antiki is also like uh, considered a, a Karaya too, but there are more, there's more accent on that. You can feel it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and when, you, when we go out in public and we're in places, even if we're in another town, they really hear your accent different. Yes. And they know, like, hey, where are you from? And they're like, oh, Tigbawa. I'm from Tigbawa too, because they hear yeah, your accent. Yeah. yeah. Even though you're going to try to speak Olongo, you still, you know, going to mix your dialect. So, kind of down through here, like Otan, Tigbawa, Gimbal, uh, Miagao, right in that area, there's a lot of that spoken, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Tribal. Uh, it was just. I'm not trying to be funny, but that was tribe. It was just the yes. tribe in this area that had their own dialect. Yeah. Yes. Like sometimes every town you go there, there there's something accent, but the, another, like, another, yes, another. Yeah. And you see why it's so hard for us foreigners to learn the language because so many because you drive ten miles down the road. Yes. Fifteen kilometers or something down the road. Yes. Uh, it's something different again. Language, you know, even the, if it can say Cebuano, they're easy to know it, you know, because they're kind of uh, similarity, similarity with some other language, you know. So they're up in Luzon, where, uh, Tagalog. yeah, where they're up there, they pretty much, do you think they have a lot of different dialects there, even in that language? Like, there's so many dialects here where we're at. Well, like, like let's can say in Luzon, then if you go towards uh, Pampanga, mm -hmm. they have their own, you know, in Batangas. You know, eh, you know, Batangas, they always say, eh, you know. Right. And in Pampanga, you know, McKinney, you know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just everywhere different, in it? But the only thing, like with me, like as a Filipino, hard for me to learn the, the late, I think late yeah, uh, their language is, uh, you know, it's different. Wow. Yes, I don't even speak one of their languages. It's so hard to understand. Yeah, it's challenging. It is. That's why a lot of people ask, how oh, do you know the language and all? Well, you can learn some basic words that the other dialects know those words too. But for you to speak f fluent, you might only be speaking fluent in your media area. But yeah. Like us, you know, I'm Ilongo. If you go to Manila, it's so easy to recognize that. Oh, you're Ilongo, huh? Every time, maybe when we're in a taxi cab and all, they'll hear you speak. Mm -hmm. And they'll ask where you're from. You know, oh, then they'll say, me too, I'm from Iloilo or yeah, something. Yeah. This evening, when I tried to speak Tagalog, uh, affluent, you know, but you can still uh, you know, so hear that. So when you meet... Ilongo. When you meet another Ilongo or that and speaks your dialect and all when you're out and about in another city far away or something and you hear each other, you recognize it instantly, right? Yes. But then do y'all start flashing your gang signs and stuff then also? You know, like you got to show your colors and you got to flash your, unless, your gang unless, signs. Unless if they already stay so long in Manila and they used to it, uh, <laughs> uh, speak Tagalog. 
Yeah, you, you really do. You're not. That's something funny I've noticed about Filipinos. No matter where in the world, even if you're from a different dialect, a different area in the Philippines or anything, you're still Filipino and you're like instantly bonded and friends. Like you're never a stranger. At least even though you're just smiling, you know, you can feel that it is your fellow Filipino at least. You know, us, us Americans, and I think other Westerners too, you know, when we're out and about and we encounter another Western a lot of times, we totally block them out. Like, man, you don't look at me. I don't look at you. What are yeah. you up to here? It's opposite. You're ne I never seen uh, excited, you know, in your face. You said, oh, you know. Just well, me, you, you know, I'm, I never meet a stranger. So I like to talk to people. I got that from my grandfather yes, and, on my and, mom's and side. And always call the Southern hospitality. You know, there's always still there. Yeah, Southern hospitality. Yes. That's right. But so many that I even look to and try to speak, man, they just like, they're scared to death that you spoke to them. They want to duck down an aisle. They want to get away from you as fast as possible. You know, like, I, so different in our culture. When I was working abroad, you know, in Singapore, so there's an Indonesian, any kind of, you know, some other country, okay, that work on that one. So if you go down to your, from your apartment, you go down, you know, you, if you see some other Filipinos, you're so happy. You can feel it already because sometimes, you know, Indonesian look, look like us also, mm -hmm. as a Filipino. Mm -hmm. At, uh, but, uh, you know, if you see, like, there's a smile, then after you smile, can I say Filipino? Yes. Yeah. Know, uh, <laughs> and you Filipinos tend to really smile too. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's cool learning different cultures. I tell you, that's a big attraction for me being here in the Philippines is that I like meeting strangers. I never meet a stranger really, you know. And in the U.S., people have become so closed off mm -hmm. that. They're, they really avoid you or they give you hard looks and stuff. But here, man, you can just talk to anybody so easy, even if they nosebleed. <laughs> We're trying. Yeah. We're trying to communicate. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Well, you know, the nice thing is, is that in the Philippines, you do speak a lot of English as a second language. Yes. And it may not be perfect, but we don't speak your language exactly, hardly at all. You know, some and so, say that, uh, oh, you speak broken English. But, you know, <laughs> if you are in my situation, you know, you, do you speak our language? <laughs> That's no, right. right? <laughs> but at least us, we know to speak English. If it's we broken, it gets, no the point of, it, it, gets, it gets the point across. It yes. gets, you are able to communicate. But at least uh, some basic Filipino, like... Uh, uh, you know, uh, let's can say like uh, innocent. And if you speak English, some Westerners they speak. Some people, yeah, they understand, you know, but they can't speak it back. But uh, we understand, you know. You understand, yes. even if you're shy to speak the words out of your mouth, yeah. you've really learned to listen in mm -hmm. a lot of English. Y'all listen to it on TV. It spoke a lot on the TV here by by news agencies, by government officials giving speeches. They're speaking in English. Mm -hmm. And in the newspapers, so many newspapers, billboard signs, so you really know English even though you may not be speaking it out of your mouth fluently. And that's actually after the, gen the generation right now, it's kind of influenced by the social media and it is really helping them also as well. It is. Yes. It's like that little boy right here, Michelle's here in our neighborhood. Everyone thought that he goes to a private school because he speaks English mm -hmm. so nice. He, he speaks a better English than I do as I hit Texan down, you know, in the southern part of the U.S. And, but no, he said, no, I just go to a public school right here, just an ordinary public school. But he speaks, a young boy, such nice English. Yes, I'm just an example, you know, Jilai, you know, she's always watching that YouTube thing or like mm -hmm. that. I know that uh, it's kind of... <laughs> Yeah, well, it, you know what the nice thing about g is, is that, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of youth are hung into the videos and the TV and everything right now. Gadgets, gadgets, gadgets. But I noticed g she likes to watch things that are just teaching her yeah. arts. She loves arts, art yeah. stuff. She loves arts, jewelry. And fashion stuff. Yep. And not just fashion, like watching a woman walk around in a dress or something. She likes of how they're making the fashion, how yeah. they're putting it together. Exactly. She is just like a sponge absorbing. I'm glad that she 
goes after those things in her searches instead of a bunch of garbage. Mm-hmm. Like on the opposite side, her sister just wants to look at junk. Yeah, she just wants a TikTok. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But G is like a sponge soaking up so many brilliant things. Yeah, it is true though. She likes art and fashion. And her her confidence to speak English and talk to me is ninety percent higher than her twin sisters. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, nice little conversation. Let's get to T's birthday. Yes, next time I'll show you. Let's go. That's right. <laughs>